Hello and welcome to the first part of performance tuning the 1.6 turbo diesel. So firstly we need to undo these four screws. So once they're undone, ease this off very gently because you don't want to tear the diaphragm though you'll struggle because it's quite thick. So yeah, like I'm doing, open enough to get your finger, just hold the diaphragm, just pull it off gently. And there we go. Now this is what we need to look at and make our first adjustments with. So firstly, that little indent points to that thread. So just remember where that is. And then we're gonna pull this out. So once this is out, don't lose that nylon washer or spacer. And we look close, as you can see the eccentric pin at the bottom and a little mark, or wear mark, or witness mark, where the pin rides. I'll explain the pin in a minute. So there we go, that's our indent at the top, which would normally sit at its factory location. And that lines up with that marker there, the little black bit. That is where the fuel pin, what we call a fuel pin, rides up and down. So as the pin rides on this eccentric cone, it's relevant to the boost control pressure. Now we want this pin to move further inwards to the right. Now as you can see, you can turn this left or right and it puts that cone off center one way or the other. Now we need to turn this clockwise to make a difference. We turn it anti-clockwise and it will have a negative effect. So, as you see, if you turn anti-clockwise, we've got less gap. So if you turn anti-clockwise, negative, we want to turn it clockwise to have a positive effect on the tuning process. So going clockwise leaves a bigger gap at the bottom, which means the pin can move over to its furthest point. So we've seen what's going on, now it's time to reinstall it. So make sure that nylon spacer is back where it should be, and we want to install it into its factory position. And then make sure it's free to move on that spring so the spring does its job and returns it to its natural position. So when it's at the point it started with, we're going to turn that all the way around clockwise to line up with the other bolt. Now, as we uh, get that washer off whilst holding the camera and trying to look at this, so that's in the new position. Now, if we now look at the bottom of that pin, we have a larger gap at the bottom, which means the pin can move across. Lots of talk of pins, but don't worry, it will become apparent shortly. So, fetch position, and then move us around to position we are going to have it into. So once you're happy where you want it, make sure the diaphragm is sat down in its recess, and then just reinstall the top. Once that's nice and tight, we can look at the inside of the pump. Now, the adjustment we're making is to the grey pin here. Once the turbo is under pressure and is working, we are getting a positive input of air in this nipple point up here, which has a downward force on the diaphragm, pushing the orange pin here right down to its base. So when the orange pin moves down to its base, it allows the grey pin to move to the right. So how does that pin, the grey one, move to the right? It has force acting on it from that green arm, which is pivoted in the middle, and has spring force acting on the bottom. So when the orange pin moves down, there is a gap for the grey pin to move across. And that moves across, gets pushed across by the tension on the bottom of the green arm, relaying across. Now as that moves across, that provides us with a touch more fuel, because if you see, the green arm is connected to a spring which connects to the red threaded section, which is the max fuel pin we adjusted earlier. So moving on, we are now looking at the turbo recirculating valve. So we have a normal waste gather turbo. We have this, which is a recirculating valve. Now we need to get this off. So this is no different to any recirculating valve on a turbo car. It's a spring and a diaphragm. 
So the spring has a set tension on it, which when acted on by a certain pressure, opens that flat bit in there and air comes out this back into the incoming air. So what are we playing around with this for? Well, the stock pressure on a 1.6 turbo diesel is about 10 PSI. Now this blow off valve opens about 12 PSI. So once we start winding the boost up in the next video to mixed with our fuel we've done in this video, this little part is going to stop our fun because no matter what we set our boost pressure to, as soon as it reaches 12 PSI or there thereabouts, this valve is going to open and divert our air. And as you can see, a bit of finger force and that moves that diaphragm inside. So what we need to do is take out this screw. Not much to it, a screw cap and a spring and a hole. Now what we need to do is put something in this hole to block it because if you screw that screw tight it still allows the diaphragm to move. So we need something about the same thickness as that spring and enough so we can screw, screw in, compress the spring and hold the diaphragm tight. So here we go, we'll lay it out that's the diaphragm, that's our spring, that's our screw, sitting about there inside, spring, top hat screw. Now, here we have our perfectly pre-made bit of material, which is actually an old bit of KJ fuel pipe, but it happens to be the same diameter as the spring. Now that is about 12mm long, so put the spring in, plop, shake it down so it sits back where it should do, and then put this bit of pipe in there, or whatever you've got to be honest, doesn't have to be pipe, could be just something, but 12 mils is a good measurement. And it also fits just inside the recess pit on that cap. Put it back in and screw it tight. So once that's all tight, that is our BOV valve defunct. So we can't move that diaphragm, which means no air is going to bypass that and recirculate. Which means when we set the boost in the next video, we will be getting the boost we want and not what the BOV valve wants to do. Ignore me a minute, I'm just making sure that screw head is aligned with that plastic cap. So once that's done, all we've got to do is put it back as it was before. So that's all back on, and the eagle eye viewers amongst you will notice I've drawn a line in it. Why? Because I like drawing the things. Mainly so I can see if it's come loose or not. Now this pipe here from the top of the fuel pump and the nipple on the inlet manifold needs to be replaced. It's well past it. I'm pulling that and you can't hear it in the video, but you can hear it's just splitting and degrading. So get that pulled off, chuck it in the bin and replace it with a nice new bit. I have chosen blue. Good bit of juice on the BMW X5 jumping it and it's fired up. So that silver collar there, we need to remove that. Choose the way you like to do, sharp screwdriver does the job. Now undo that nut behind there where the little yellow bit is. And with the engine running, you want to screw the idle, this one here, right down. So turn it clockwise right down until the revs drop down. About there. Now once that's done, you want to screw this max fuel screw in clockwards, clockwise even, just to the point the revs start rising and go back up to approximately 1000 RPM like they would be normally. 
So once we're happy with our adjustments, tighten that nut up. Now, when the engine's running, that stud, little timber bolt, has power to it, because that's your fuel cut off Lloyd. So when adjusting, tighten and secure that nut, turn the engine off, in case you slip and make a spark. So once that's done, we are all ready to move on to boost. So our turbo pump is set up, our vacuum advance is set up, our max fueling is set up, we have sorted our blow off valve so we can set the boost whatever we want to. So again, that's done. Wastegate down there is next, but we need to focus on which will be in the next video. We'll be running it with some boost and adjusting it and see how quick it goes. So final before and after, as you can see on the first video, it, the revs are a bit delayed when you're revving it versus when we've made our adjustments. It is a lot quicker to rev up and revs nicer and higher. So anyway, I'll see you in the next one when we'll be turning up the boost.